Filipino ancestors who paid the price for us to become Americans. From October 1997 to October 1998 is declared the centennial anniversary year of observance by the Hampton Roads chapter of the Filipino American National Historical Society. During this time, educational programs are being developed to promote the historical bond between the Philippines and the United States. This video you are about to watch is vignettes of a youth summit that was conducted in Virginia Beach, Virginia from October 11th through October 12th. The theme, the centennial journey through Filipino America. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Part of the plan, much pain before us during the excursion, no surprise, and hoes and shit, commit to certain. 1587 was the beginning, was the year. Filipinos in America, we were the first agents here. 1781, documented to this day, Antonio Miranda, Filipino founder of LA. Special message, we beyond the send. Educate yourself, be strong like the Manila men. Escape the colonial mentality. Jump shit, start your own colony. Filipinos in Mississippi, I never read it in my history. What a mystery, I really need to know. Where are the roots where I came from so I can grow? Filipinos, you need to learn to be alive. You need to educate yourself before you claim you have pride. Keep in mind, the people of St. Malo, stay strong, my fellow people Filipino. Right? Yeah. Been on this boat for three months long. Man, I said there's something unbearably wrong. Man, you know what the Spanish said? Said I wouldn't have to look poor. Man, can't say, man. They tricked us. I can't take this no more. Yo, man. I say we do start about it. Do you have a plan? Yeah, I got a plan. Plan to get us away from the man. Okay. Tell me, tell me. For I want us to be free. I don't care if I have to sacrifice never seeing my family. Days and days go by. The Spanish tell me how to behave. Days and days go by. In my head, builds a rage. What am I, a slave? No, I'll not be a slave. I'll be free till the day I lie my grave. But the day we arrive, land holy of the man. Or jump ship, start a new life in a new land. We'll escape living in this insanity. We'll travel and start a new colony. We'll escape this Spanish wrong. We'll succeed because we're Filipino. We're strong. 
You Filipino fools, you make me sick. You better watch your word. Don't give me no lip. Yeah. Roger your ship. to the land of the free, working hard every day, money for the families. Check out the doors. So what? Don't you know? Hanging up the size of red, no Filipinos. They couldn't handle us. They enforced segregation, giving me the inspiration. Begin the integration. The movement has the rise. Pinoy's on the rise from the fields of Hawaii, first town on the east side. It's time for world war. Everyone get geared up. Filipinos fighting with pride, never gonna give up. Earning mad respect. They couldn't hold us down. How to use the 45 Pinoy's coming to town. It's all about the history. All 100 years. It's all about the struggle. We shed so many tears. Philippines with all their lives. No justice, no peace! 
Equity now. No justice, no peace. Equity now. No justice, no peace. Equity now. The fourth and final wave has come for sure. It's time to stop looking at the past and concentrate on the future. Let me ask a question. Are we truly free? A century passed, what's changed really? Minorities still not treated equally? In this society, it's a never ending story. The plot is still the same. The we do more that the characters change. Ain't that a shame? Well, listen up. It's a whole new ball game. We're starting a revolution. The next generation. We are no longer blinded by the deceptions of history told foul by the round eyes. Decolonize your minds and realize the lies. Many years have been told, stories have been sold. It would be our fatality to can foreigners have superiority, get rid of this colonial mentality. First priority, as you can see. They can die trying to subdue us, but the loss of gravity, they can't even hold us to right whatever was unjust. In God we trust, repair we must. Our death of honor to our forefathers, pioneers who went through blood, sweat, and tears for us. I share the pain. Would they turn in their grave if all they ever did was all in vain? Certain things we need to change are within a range, but we can't go shooting our guns without a name. Our community is our responsibility. It's our duty to put it simply, to foresee our society progressing to the next century. Education is the key to unlock these chains. And lie in your mind is terrible thing for you to waste. It's a concept you mustn't forget. All y'all heads here, you need to start to think. Do what you can, wear up, represent. You know a problem, man? My main point, blank. You might wonder who I'm mourning. I'll tell you who, this is to me. We're mourning the death of our ancestry. But we're giving birth to a world that is truly free. In a land, in a time, where it's not you against me. Our history's lies are rectified. And where all our people will stand with pride. Filipino! <laughs> about being Filipino is that we're unique in a way that because we're the minority. The bad thing about being Filipino is Filipino time. <laughs> <laughs> a good thing about being Filipino is our respect for elders. The bad thing about being Filipino is we're incompetent of our culture. 
Good thing about being Filipino is that we know how to say hi with our eyebrows. <laughs> The good thing about being Filipino is that we each consume 300 pounds of rice a year. <laughs> the bad thing about being Filipino are mail order rides. The good thing about being Filipino is our hospitality. The bad thing about being Filipino is our crab mentality. And the good thing about being Filipino is our unique blend of cultures. And one last thing, the good thing about being Filipino is a barrel man. <laughs> generation thing, you know. We've got like a generation gap. You know, our parents, our parents are from a whole different land. <laughs> Filipinos in America are like a teenager. They don't have an identity. They go out and search. Right. That's what we're doing now. And like uh, talking about the language and stuff, how hard is it for us to, to relay that to our kids? Our kids aren't even gonna eat rice, you know what I mean? Our kids aren't gonna speak Tagalog. Our kids, our kids might not even have Filipino last names. And that's that's what like when it comes back to being American, that's what it's going to be. That's true. Yeah, but like, how do you know? You know, it, it, it just depends on how. Yeah, how you want to raise. You see, you see, I make the last right. African last names. Right. But if you're so proud of being Filipino, why did you want to carry it on? Well, yeah, well, I'm going to carry it on, but do do being carry it on? Do you just your color? So your kids are going to be brown Americans? No, I mean, is are we in the Philippines now? Do are we really experiencing things that Filipinos in in the Philippines experience? No, All we, we can do is learn. You do experience the culture and the, and the traditions of everything. We also need to understand something, though, because you know I organized grassroots level in college, and you know a lot of these Phil M organizations, they think you know our culture only goes as far as what we eat and our cultural dances. Our experience is much deeper and more profound than that. You know, my friend Tim Cordova said something once. You know, it's like he does. You know, he doesn't eat lumpia, right? And he doesn't speak Tagalog. But he still has experienced um, what Filipino American is. You know, his father sacrificed. You know, they were migrant laborers. So regardless of what we eat or what we speak, we still have that common experience. And if we forget that, we're sort of disrespecting those whose shoulders we stand on. And we need to remember that. So no matter if we speak the language or eat the food, we still stand on shoulders of Filipinos who came here. That's what I learned from my parents. And like, uh, I went to like an amusement park. And I have some friends that speak you know, Tagalog. The attendants are there, right? And they're speaking Tagalog. And then as soon as we come up over there, they start speaking loud like, the ride you want is over there. I'm like, excuse me? They're like, oh, you speak English. You know, I'm so over that, you know? I mean, why are people, some people are just, they don't know, well, I don't, I don't want to say ignorant. But I mean, it's just messed up to see we're not white or we're not black. They automatically assume that we speak a different language, you know? So what I do is I throw them off. I have someone giving me that look. I start speaking French or something like that, you know? It's like, oh bonjour, you know, like, oh what? Oh, God, you know what I'm saying? That's exactly, you know? I mean, that's just what throws me for a loop. What was it? You know what I mean? Okay, this is what you can do. Break in your groups, and you're going to come up with two songs. And you're going to see well, how we you know what other people, if they can get the song that you guys have. Also, one other thing. Not only that, but you guys, in your groups, come up with maybe a memory or an experience in your childhood during the 80s in which um, it was distinctly Filipino-American. What more can I say we live in? Because that's what we got it good. And since you understood, what's the next line? What's the next line and who, and who does it? Saving is saving. All right. Uh, living. That's, that's, that's what we get. That's what we got, because we got it good. And if you understood. Ooh. Uh, I know what that is. I know what that is. I know what that is. I know what Wait, give me a minute. Alright, one more last time. Last time, go ahead. That's what we got. Wait. <laughs> Yo, living, that's what we got. We got it good. And since you understood, would you. Section job. <laughs> Are you going to Okay. Alright, uh, let's see. Uh, three, two, one.
what? The answer is... That's what we got. It's up. We got, got it good. good. And since you understood, understood, would you clap your hands, your hands yeah, I no clap. <laughs> if your girl steps up, yeah. since your girl I slap. It's a milk and it's a audio two by audio two. Alright. Uh, see if y'all know this one. Uh, no. <laughs> You're on your own, brother. Run back. Uh, no. No. Come on, guys. She's just a girl from Birmingham. She just had an abortion. She's just a case of insanity. Her name is Polly. To make it easier. Lady Houston. about the commitments of uniting, mobilizing, organizing, prioritizing, planning, programming, strategizing, implementing, and doing their own thing to get farther in the mainstream where the sun shines as we, far away upstream, still are wondering, gazing, hesitating, envying, criticizing, commiserating, disputing, contending, rivaling, sleeping, gambling, pouring, or just facing out and turning off while raindrops keep dropping on our heads. And in check it since we, who expound we are either Filipino? Who declared we are either American? Who denied we are neither? We are all coconuts, brown outside and white inside, because we are never sure who or what we are. Like coconuts, big ones, small ones, varying in kind. We too are many kinds, even though we spring from the same family tree. Producing myriad shades of brown mixed with white, Mexican, Puerto Rican, American Indian, Alaskan Native, Black, Chinese, Japanese, Korean, Hawaiian, Romanian, and other mestizo blood. Thanks to our parents. God bless them. We are all kinds because it takes all kinds to make us whoever and whatever we are. We are young. We are old. Native and alien. Flat nosed and big nosed. Slant eyed and dark eyed. Dark and light. Poor and poorer. Middle class and lots of class. Smart and stupid. Industrious and lazy, full blood and hardly any blood. Scrutable Chinese and macho Spanish. University degree and third degree. Trilingual and articulate, loquacious and stoic. Hyper and passive, cynical and naive. Gentle and violent, doctor, dishwasher, Indian chief, and Catholic, con man, petty thief. We are hard workers. workers. Struggling in schools, neighbor, and home in our general survival, and we try to work hard. Even, we, even though we are accused, we do not try to work hard even we do not work hard while we try to work even harder to please. Yes, sir, yes, ma'am, yes, boss. Thank you, sir, thank you, ma'am, thank you, boss. I'm so sorry, sir. 
I'm so sorry, ma'am. I'm sorry, boss. We, we are not in our meekness. Rarely angry at Miss Rap, and so in our fury, we never go to serve. We just run them up with knives and pistols. We have no preference. Watch out, everyone. Stay away, far away. We only desire to hurt ourselves for fear of offending others. But do not push us too far. We will fight for our right. We are dead, marginal men, marginal women, and better yet, martyrs, because we are not, we are being burnt, posted, seized, raised, scorched, always to our detriment for someone else's benefit. Thus, we party, dance, banquet, and happy in our delusions of grandeur. We do not hurt as much with the pain of exploitation. We're the papas, mamas, uncles working in the fields, stooping from sunrise to sunset, sweating in the layers of dust that cling to our tanned skin. We are the brothers, the monos, the salmon, crab, tuna, from the best perfume, our wager and bodies, and the sign with the fish cannons. We are the old faces in restaurants, hotels, benches where we do valuable service from cooking white food, waiting on tables, washing pots, fixing beds, cleaning rooms, polishing hallways, running elevators to smiling, always smiling at our fast pace, while even hustling for extra money on the side, and teaching our brand new customers to the workforce of all shortcuts in the job to cut short the daily drudgery. We are those subordinates whom our superiors like to call Filipino boys, even though we will never never live to see 65 again. We, we are the forgotten second generation, generation, bridging the past with the present, but remaining uncertain of our future, silent in our thoughts, private in our fears, deluded within our dreams, <clears throat> hidden in our pursuits, regretful over our failures, overlooked in our achievements, and omitted by our very own. We, we are the third generation. generation. The now generation. Divorced from the ways of our parents, alienated from the fermented smell of fishy baga'on, and more sadly, from the discipline, endurance, and faith of our grandparents. We are the immigrants newly arrived, inspired by the red, white, and blue flag, not of the Sapia sun and the three stars within the triangle, but of the 50 white stars within the red pen. We fought, a gap in, we fought against the Japanese. Asians for Asians, they said, and immediately killed our men, women, and children, and pillaged homes in the Philippines. Atrocities! We fought against the Americans. I shall return, they said, and eventually neglected our men, women, and children, and rebuilt homes in Japan. Atrocious! We warred on America's side and prayed for the rise of the United States. We battled the Japanese side and saw the fall of the Philippines by the Han and Corregidor. We died by the thousands, and we suffered by the millions. Atrociousness! The invaders by military force left our native land, the club by the Manila. We, by economic force, had to leave our native land, the Pacific and USA. We are denied as veterans, deprived as immigrants, demeaned as being overqualified, underqualified, incompetent, untrained, unschooled, limited, and being deposed for having English with an accent. Whose side do we fight on? Are we not among the victors? Why then to the defeated go the spoils of a world war? And was not the Philippines in the 90s, the, the Vietnam of the 70s? However, we have become the new face among office workers, so-called professionals, where we were, where we are one notch up from our brown brothers and sisters among domestic hands who empty our trash cans and mop the floors even while we work our shifts. We continue to be family folk among couples, first generations, being grown children, lots of first generation. Being babysitted by law, grandma, lots of first generation. And all homesick for the homeland, being the Philippines. We are the brown faces you see on the city streets. No longer curious about each other. No longer smiling at one another. No longer caring. Three persons speak the same street, but there was different faces. Recognizing, recognizing not the faces of our brothers and sisters. They seated us. They have been destroyed. For the right to be in those very streets. Get away from your brown monkey! Stop loitering! You don't belong here! Go back to where you belong! Yet, yeah. how, how we remember the faces of, of our dead as we gather a community to honor these pioneers, old timers, heroes, and heroines of the first wave, at funeral parlors, churches, cemeteries, such unlike sites for reunions among friends in mournful events turned social or living un under death for life. Still, we are nobodies missing our West Georgia society among somebody, somebody's like the teacher, 
your employer, your basketball star, your plumber, your television personality, your top entertainer, your top singing artist, your top big time vital, your big time anything. Why do we drop out of school? Especially in our youth, why do we shirk from the knowledge that would transport us to the expanse of space, the depths of the ocean, the complexities of a computer, the infinity of a molecule, the almightiness of words? Is it the lack of money, role models, ass kickers? Is it because of the system? Or is it ourselves? We are the emerging fourth generation, who in the face of the future, wonder what all this Filipino stuff is all about and whether it is not for real or not, let alone having to deal with life, getting through school, finding a job, having peace of mind, feeling some measure of happiness, owning a few bucks, and getting ourselves, our head, our act, our shit together. We, we celebrate, we sacrifice, we progress, we regress. We cook to live and live to die. God in hell, who are we? What are we? We are everyone to whom this war has to give, for whom America has to store. We are minority, racially, ethnically, culturally, politically, socially, economically, educationally, not necessarily in that order. We are Malay, we are Asian, we are people of color, of the third world. We are disadvantaged, disenfranchised, dispossessed, disowned, disavowed of our roots, of our history, of our culture, of our languages, of our dialects, of our identification, of our legacy, of our equities, of our share of ourselves. We are that minority by whom we had said to you some time ago, make up a minority within a minority within a minority. For most of us, America can do no wrong. For few of us, America cannot do anything right. As far back as the New Deal, America has really given us a fair deal. Based on long history of patronage and nonetheless, she's more so than the raw deal. The Exclusion Act continues to be acted out from within the bureaucracy. The purpose of this grant is to is to expand the existing Asian language collection as certain Chinese, Japanese, Korean, and Vietnamese readers in the state. Who and what are we? Proudly we are Americans. Who are brown, unlike George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, Florence Nightingale, <coughs> Eleanor Roosevelt, the Lone Ranger, Superman, Charlie Chan, Douglas MacArthur, John F. Kennedy, Martin Luther King Jr. Practically, we are also Filipinos. Who are Tagalog, Ilocano, Pangasinan, Biko, Visayan, and Muslim too, whose roots spring from throughout the sun, the Visayas and Mindanao, like Lapu Lapu, Gabriela Silan, Francisco de Gohoy, Gregorio del Pilar, Francisco Aquino Reyes, Raymond Magsaysay, Carlos Ramulo, Jaime Sin, Lorenzo Ruiz, and new championship group from throughout America, like Pancho Villa, Carlos Balusan, Jose Caluegas, Vicky Manalo Draves, Roman Gabriel, Barbara Luna, Ron O'Neill, Ty Babylonia. We are not just American and Filipino, Filipino and American. Pinoy! Yes, we are Pinoys. Now, now what in God's name is that? is that? And would someone Pinoy please explain? Let's give it up for Lake Taylor, Northern Virginia. in that first anti-Filipino riot, fighting for my rights and yours too. I'm your father and others like him who came to America through the Navy. That's a great offense to what you said today. That person you joked was me. No Filipino didn't just appear in this country. That person was just like I was. He is beginning his own legacy in the United States. Now he, come, now he comes here to keep that from his own people. It's not right. I want you to meet some people. I'm your president. You are the president. Why don't you tell me who we are? I don't know about you, but me, I'm an athlete. I'm the best baller at school. I'm the young JV team last year. I'm a genius too. I've been an honor since kindergarten. And I love to eat. I'm not to be at all dinner parties yesterday. 
I can't say that for all these beautiful women out here. Try guys with all the beauty patterns. Is that it? What about all the Filipino-American clubs and organizations? Haven't you done anything for your community? Man, there's much more to it than that. Man, that's all a waste of time. Besides, none of my friends right now. I don't know like fool. Oh, really? Let me tell you something, boy. It's not about being or looking like a fool. We are the present. Don't forget things have changed. And you're one of those people who can make a difference and help build up this community. And I don't think that's looking like a fool. Now, I want you to check somebody else I want you to meet. I am your future. You have two possible outcomes. You're so good at basketball, so many good grades. So I like to enjoy your own fancy beauty pageants. But you're not the captain of the team. You're not the good cause because minority and scholarships are gone. And you still have no identity, you still have no identity. Why? How? Remember this morning? Remember the times people asked for help? You just brushed them off? Apathy. That's why, that's how. It could be different, much different. Good grades, basketball, you still get all those things. More importantly, you get unity, identity, and strength. These things were like wildfire. <laughs> <laughs> this one's not there. These things were like, like wildfire. You reach your parents, brothers and sisters, eventually your own children, the next generation, the next future. And all because of people that can't pay attention to your history. So start listening to this, use this, and stop being apathetic.
kids out there with the same brown skin and the same noses who are in gangs. And Kunanan, when it was broadcasted that he was Filipino, what does that do to the Filipino name in America? Huh? Yeah, that's just one person. And when you just sit there and let Duke make fun of us like that, he's going to think it's okay to make fun of all Filipinos, including me, ones who are offended. Matt, but Vince, there's always going to be ignorant people. They're always going to stereotype us. What am I supposed to do? I can't be bothering with every ignorant person I meet. No, oh, man. Waste of time. I mean, it's no point. I got tasks to go to, man. I got, you know, I got things to do, you know? Guys, man, if we want to stop ignorance, man, we need to start with ourselves. Huh? Why, do you, why do you guys always make fun of Nelly for having darker skin, huh? Whoa. Does that say to America that we devalue our own color? <laughs> no, 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 I joking myself, oh look at my little egg or whatever. <laughs> well, I, 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 know, I didn't know you felt like that. I'm sorry, Helen. Yeah, man. That's easy. Marcella, man. 
How do you like it when we make fun of your cheeky eyes, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Huh? Call you cheeky boy. That, that's why Duke comes off like that. We do it to ourselves. Yeah. Well, you know, I can take the jokes, you know? I can take it. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so many Filipinos brought up here make fun of Filipinos come straight from the Philippines, huh? Oh, man. Is it, is it their accents? <laughs> those are people, man, those are people who came here just like their own parents. Are we embarrassed of our own parents? No. Yeah, yeah don't be talking about my mom. <laughs> <laughs> man, I even went to a coach tonight where they devoted a whole skit to, devote, to stereotype all Filipinos as dog eaters. Everybody was laughing. What, what, what is a non-Filipino going to think about this? He's going to think all Filipinos eat dogs, huh? Well, not unless, you know, we explain or... And what, what about the few back home that do? What's so funny about that, huh? Well, I don't it's, it's, you know, it's just... I mean... It's, it's the same, dogs. it's the same in the all the stereotypes we face, man. <laughs> They're always going to stereotype us because we stereotype ourselves. And we stereotype ourselves because we don't know our history and our culture. We are ignorant. Vincent, I know what being Filipino is about. I mean, my mom makes me do all those boat dances. I, I know, right? Because of my chicken cream. This is bad. This is bad. Let's go. Let's take a break. Talk about the black and black black and black. I know what you're talking about. It was about those big spoons and forks on my wall. You know what I'm saying? 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 Sit there with you know, just, you know, just, just chill and get something to eat, you know, at the same time. But I mean, it is looking. <laughs> yeah. Guys, man, we're so much more than that. If all we know about our culture is superficial <coughs> things like cooking or dancing, then that's how we're going to portray ourselves. And then they're always going to stereotype us, man. That's why we have to educate ourselves so we can portray ourselves correctly. And only then will we break the stereotypes and we will be seen more than just singing or dancing or however way we stereotype ourselves. You but Vince, you know, we just landed on this country. I mean, we're lucky to even be here, you know. My, my parents tried hard to get here. You know, we just can't land in this country and expect to be equal, you know? And you know, it's just, you know, like all I gotta say, it's their country. It's not our it's not my country, it's their country. Wait a minute, man. Filipinos have been in this country even before America declared independence from the British Crown. Where'd you get that from? In 1763, we settled in the bays of Louisiana. Did you know that? 1763, man. We even fought in the World War of 1812. And then during, the 20s, during the 20s and 30s, we picked asparagus in the West Coast and sugar canes in Hawaii. Of course the Philippines in Hawaii. Man, we have we fought proud, proudly in World War II and have served proudly in the Navy. Man, we have contributed greatly to this country, so we do belong here. And besides, we pay our taxes, we deserve to be heard. Man, that's what we gotta learn, man. We need to stop putting ourselves down. Because until we learn our history and culture, in the, not only the Philippines, but here in America, we are always gonna feel inferior, and we're always gonna feel like we don't belong. And we will always be ignorant, and we will always be stereotyped. Man, we are at a crucial point in our history. Did you know our centennial is coming up? What do you mean? 100 years. 100 years of independence from Spain. 100 years of relationship with America. For 100 years of invisibility. Our history, man, it's not being told. Our stories are being forgotten. That's true. Man, we gotta educate ourselves and speak up. Time is now. Our, our dying lovers cannot wait. We are the vision, man. We are the vision of those people who came before us. We gotta stop putting ourselves down. We gotta educate ourselves. We gotta speak up. We gotta rise up. We need to expand our brown vision and reach higher and higher. Definitely, man. Most definitely. Or else, all that our parents and ancestors worked for will be gone, and we'll always be forgotten Asian Americans. Let's start off with Mike, and we'll just go down the road. Don't get going. My name is uh, Mike Reyes uh, from Washington, D.C. I run my own company. I'm a CEO and president of Manila Gallery. You see the books out there. We design websites and everything. My purpose of being here today is for you all. I'm here because this community, Philippine American community has given so much to myself to find my identity, find what I want to do in my career. The reason I run my own business, not so much as I know I'm not going to make a lot of money selling Filipino American books. I do it for you all because there are no resources here on the East Coast compared to the West Coast. 
I'm here, I'm translating the skills that I've learned in my business classes, in my economic classes, and bringing it back to the community, whether it be through books, whether it be through fundraising, marketing, whatever. And that's my contribution to this community. I'm Joe Montano. I, I was raised in Norfolk, Virginia, um, but recently I've been. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mike. No, but um, recently I've been living up in uh, the D.C. area, and I have been involved for the past two, three years with the Filipino Civil Rights Advocates. Uh, they were founded in 1994, set up for as a voice for our uh, Filipino American community to address topics like immigration, affirmative action, uh, anti-Asian violence, uh, and also one of the uh, issues that has been the one that we've been consumed with lately, you might have heard something about it, is the uh, equity for the Filipino World War II veterans. So those are some of the issues that my organization deals with. And what it is, is, is getting to know the community and speaking up for the community and helping educate the brothers and sisters in the community. Um, I was raised here and my parents used to refer to me as their American son because I really didn't want to do any uh, folk dancing, I didn't want to wear my barong Tagalog, I didn't want to eat the uh, bagulong or anything. But it wasn't until I got to college, I started interacting with uh, other Filipinos and Filipino Americans in the student organization. And through that I got involved in the community up there and then eventually into civil rights work. Uh, basically what runs my life uh, in regard to that is that there have been times when something has happened to Filipinos, uh, Filipino Americans, where you watch it on television, you read it in the paper, and you say, you know, that's too bad, you know? I, I just wish that wouldn't have happened. But now, today when I see something wrong, I get up and I, you know, I speak out about it. And, and I help others understand what's going on and what was the reason that happened to them in and, and, and the area of civil rights. So I'm here as a resource person because what we're talking about is talking about <laughs> is about community ownership. And as a community, we have these issues that really affect just Filipino Americans. They may affect others, but we have to have a way where we take ownership of these issues too, and we do something about them as a community. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My at New York University, and I also work with the Filipino American Human Services Incorporated. And part of what we're trying to talk about today is obviously community ownership. And what I'm here to do really is kind of a part of that, you know. You're not just learning from us, we're taking things from you too. And after we all leave this conference, when we go back to our own communities and take what we've learned here and actually use it, that's, that's community ownership, right? So, it's not only for you guys to take stuff from here, but it's also for us, and that's why I'm here. Uh, my name is Joe Montalatino. I'm from uh, New Jersey. Um, born and raised as a Filipino American. I, I, I stress both factors because I'm proud of both that I'm of Filipino descent because that's every part of my, my being. Right? And also that I'm an American citizen because that's what my parents worked hard for. Right? That's what I'm also equally proud of. Now, when I speak of pride, I always talk about, you know, people identify me as being, you know, very proud to be Filipino, and at one point in my life, I questioned, what does that mean, you know? Um, does it mean just simply wearing a barong? Does it mean eating the food? Does it mean dancing with the nangling? So I went out, and I, when I went to the Philippines, I came back with, like, more than a dozen books, and I started reading about the history there. Then I met in, I ran into Fonz, and I learned about the great history out here of Filipino Americans. And it just deepened my sense of pride. But I realized I, I got to take that out further because it's not enough just to feel the pride. So I started telling people about what they could be proud of as well. And I started speaking out more. But then I realized it's not enough just to speak. It's not enough just to feel. It's not enough just to speak. Even though what we say might change the minds of others, might change the way they think, it wasn't enough just to think, right? We had to act on things. And that's why I've been active in, in, in organizations such as the Filipino Students Association at my school, I've been active with the Filipino Intercollegiate Networking Dialogue, um, which is a collegiate organization that brings East Coast institutions together to discuss issues in our community. I also became involved with, uh, right now I'm involved with an arts group in, in uh, New York called Archipelago. Right? But all these 
all these um, organizations, doesn't matter what title I hold in them, what, they only serve as a vehicle for me to work for the community. Right? To work for the community. And that's why, if any title I take on is community activist. On my arm I have written in Alibata, which is an ancient Filipino script before Spanish colonization, what it says is a Naknambayan, children of the people. Right? So I call myself a community activist, but then I thought, well, you know, if I'm a community activist, then I must, be get, act, I must get active in the community. Right? That's why I'm here for you guys, and I'm you know, trying to get in touch with the youth out of Jersey, because I want to be active in the community to find out what the issues are and to deal with them. As an activist, I just wanted to say that the two things I worked on are preservation of our culture, because that's where we find our pride, right? But also, we got to deal with the issues that are affecting our community. And I want you all to realize that you are all activists. In this sense, you're in, you're in the discussion. You have an active part. Please, please become active. And also, whatever knowledge you gain, take it out there. And give it to you. Hi, my name is Evan Pekia. I'm 22 year old, male, single. I'm not here from Norfolk State. I'm an ensign of the Navy. I am a nurse. I'm a pediatric nurse. Um, I like to have a lot of fun. I'm not involved in big politics stuff or other things like these guys are, which they. I love them, hey, they do what they want to do, but I could not do that. I could not be that, that, that active in what they do. I like coming back, talking back to the high school students, you know, hey, what's going on? I was there. I was in your seat, looking at other people before. Now I'm up here, I'm no different from you. I can take a seat right back there and you'll know no difference. Okay? I'm a regular. I'm not, I'm not saying these days, they're regular too. But I, I, that's not for me. Um, what we're going to be talking about today is about a lot of community stuff. Like what Julian said, it's about... It's not really, you know, no matter what you're going to be an activist, and it's not really how active you are, but how much activity you put into it. You're here today. God said, let them be here. And you're here. So you're going to take something back to your community. I don't know what it is. I don't know what you're going to say, but I tell you what. When you leave this room today, you're going to learn something. I promise you that. Because if I don't, you all owe me five bucks. <laughs> no, but really. You're going to learn something today, okay? <laughs> Okay, it's gonna go like this. Birds of the feather. Oh my God. <laughs> And I had to release my pain, so I took up a pen, and I took up a paper, and I wrote this poem called The Three Strangers, and this is how it goes. Okay. Yeah. 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 Three strangers came upon my house. The first looked at me and said, my, what a wicked soul. Let me offer you salvation by means of Christianization, and with this he held out a cross, and with this he held my soul. The second looked at me and said, my, what a savage beast. Let me offer you civilization by means of education, and with this he held out a book, and with this he held my mind. The third looked at me and said, <laughs> My, what a worthless fool. Unlike the others, I won't tell you lies. We came to enslave, not to colonialize. And with this he held a gun to my head, and with this he held my body. Now these two strangers have left my house, and with it they have left their gifts. But instead of salvation, I received desperation. Instead of education, I received deception. And even when given the truth, I received nothing but destruction. Now I'm left alone to uplift my home from its devastation. But you are not alone. For like the sun, every day we rise. And like its eight rays, we shine. Like three stars, once our body, mind, and soul combine, we glow. Like red tapestry, our blood flows. Like blue, rivers to oceans, oceans to seas. Like my people, never to be held captive, always, always to remain free. free. 
like you, like me, like my people, never to be held captive, always, always to remain, remain free. free. For there will come a time when the bells of revolution will chime. There will come a day when my people will cast their shackles away. There will come a bolt of lightning from the sky which will open my people's eyes and call them to, to rise, to rise. Up from the depths of ignorance, out from, from the layers of colonial lies. They shall now hear and now heed the thou's battle cry. Mine is the heart of the carabao. Mine is the soul of the thou. It is time for revolution. We are the times of revolution. Strike, Strike now! now! We had workshops discussing growing up brown, being Filipino, and being in the U.S. as a minority, and having Filipino clients. The conference emphasized the knowledge of our roots and exploration of other cultures. We learned that pride in our Filipino culture is something that we shouldn't be afraid to do. Here in the United States, you don't see a Filipino restaurant on every street corner, do you? The fact of the matter is that due to all the colonialism, at first by the Spanish, then by the Americans, Filipinos seem to have lost their cultural pride. Caused by an unsure feeling of what Filipino culture is exactly, Filipino Americans automatically embrace Western culture. We don't have great Filipino role models to base our perception of ourselves on, and thus end up becoming more and more Americanized. To not really move away from American culture, but we will keep in our mind our Filipino culture, today's youth are going to great lengths. Beginning at the high school level, numerous conferences, dialogues, etc., are being and have been organized. The amount of Filipino youth groups and organizations is clearly steadily increasing. Many young people are now taking to dialogue courses to be able to teach their children and to confer with their elders. Our parents' decision to give us a quote-unquote better life in America is a mixed blessing. Though education and opportunities here are far better than those back home, quotas, stereotypes, and discrimination are forces that inhibit our power to take advantage of the opportunities given to us. Asians aren't always given a fair chance due to those prejudices. More recent Filipino immigrants were professional white-collar workers but had to settle for lower jobs unless they were trained here. Images that are being fed to the media are one depicting a white or black dominated society. When Asians are seen in the media, they are shown as being of extreme intelligence or being fresh off the boat fought. Among teenagers, we are viewed as being either gangsters, slackers, or overachievers. Others don't recognize the fact that we have to work together to achieve what they can't be believe a thing. Filipino youths are developing our own images. After various attempts to fully immerse ourselves in one culture, we will show everyone that we can be both American and Filipino. The fact that others perceive Filipino teenagers as either underachievers or overachievers prevents them from seeing the true colors of who we are.
speaking here uh, I would just like to say that there's been rapid growth and I'm just totally surprised proud and impressed with everything that's gone on today just remembering our history of our people and just the living culture that's ongoing <laughs> I was a college student leader until I graduated from Rutgers University I'm now graduate student in Southeast Asian Studies and Philippine American Studies at Cornell University. Wow, what city is that in New Jersey? Um, I'm from the Newark area, but I'm in Ithaca, New York right now. Wow, okay, so did you have a um, very safe and um, good trip? Did you learn a lot on your way here too? Well, I'll tell you what, um, being up in this new environment, because I've worked very intimately with my community over the last four years, I really started to miss it, being up in that academic environment. So more than ever, um, I understand that I'm a community organizer, and uh, in addition to this, this this uh, dialogue and youth summits really given me perspective. Have you been um, in this city before, sir? Um, yes, I have. So what do you think about the community here um, compared to the community um, there in New Jersey? The thing, um, I guess, in, in the community in New Jersey, um, it's, it's somewhat thriving, but um, our Filipino-American community has a lot of issues that they're still grappling with. And I notice here that there's this, this positive energy and, and there's this dynamic kind of uh, energy going on right now, and I appreciate it. Sometimes I've, I've had to stop and ask myself, wow, these are high school <laughs> students? You know, the abstract poetry or, or the passion, mm -hmm. I love it, you know, and, and what I'm saying is a lot of activists in, in the New York area have always wished that earlier on we could have been exposed to these progressive ideas, and it's important that our children start this, our ch you know, these children that have the evolution start so much earlier, you know? You're so right, you're so right. And you, sir, can you tell us who you are and where you're from? Yes, my name is Reginald Esteban, I'm from the Filipino American Student Association, Old Dominion University. And oh, so you're from here, okay. Yes, yes. I'm and you here. two know each other? Yes. Uh, through um, FIND, which is the Filipino Intercollegiate Network Dialogue. Oh, I see. So were you the one that invited him and his group to come down here? Uh, actually, it was some of the other students over here that told him about it. And okay, so we already see a networking already happening even bef you know, before this day's event then. Definitely. Yes, it's uh, really good among the youth and we're really proud of the things that we can do together. And okay, well tell me something. Is there a message you want to uh, send across to maybe some of the high school students that didn't get a chance to attend today's event? Maybe, um, you know, even if you know, it's not too late, whether they're still in high school or getting ready to attend college. Is there something you might want to tell them? Because I know this is going to be a continuing uh, progress, you know, for, for, for us to have this type of event happening. I think more of the, if more of the high school people get together, it'll be even, even better. It'll be great. Great, great. So um, when you return back home, I mean, what do you think is going to be the next step for, with the uh, Pinoy community up, up there in New Jersey and New York? Well, I'll tell you, we brought down some high school students that are very into uh, organizing. And um, at first, maybe they were a bit discouraged because we don't have a lot of positive examples of what it means to be Filipino there. And obviously, coming down here, they see by example that uh, it's possible to organize and be progressive. So I guess my message to uh, other high school students and high school organizations aspiring to do things like this is, obviously, it's possible, number one. Number two, it can be successful. And number three, there are people here who can help you to reach these goals. We need not reinvent the wheel. That's right. Seven years old. Wow. And I know I'm um, fluent, you know, speak Tagalog, but I've never seen anything like this before. I mean, it's really great that we have this unity with young kids. Well, you know, a good question that I might have is um, a lot of this generation have a more shorter attention span, but somehow these kids are very focused. And um, with the fast paced media we have nowadays from maybe our generation, you know, I mean, do you think that this will cling on as far as um, spreading the message to them and to those that didn't get a chance to come in and witness this event? I hope so. I think we need to get more parents involved in this. And I think the more parents are aware that they see what we're doing with this young kids, I think, you know, we'll have a better chance to have more kids get involved. Wow. And I want to talk to these nice ladies here, maybe what they thought about um, what just what they just thought. Do you just want to give us a few words? First of all, tell us who you are. I'm Lita Razan uh, from Kempsville. 
Oh, from Kentsville. You want to tell us what you've learned from yes, today's I event? Have, I'm really very impressed with the kids, and I'm really happy that something got going on like this in, the, in this area. So you think more of this should be happening, right? Should be. And I think the adults and the parents should be involved also. Definitely. Because uh, we live in Portsmouth. Oh, in Portsmouth. Hey, nothing yeah. wrong with Portsmouth. And my only regret really is when my kids were in high school, they didn't have this kind of thing. Right, yeah. A lot my of kids are old. <laughs> That's okay. Hey, it's never too late to but learn. They're not in here. They're not in this area. So they, I wish that they were, and so maybe they can get in. Well, maybe you could send them a copy of this video. They could watch this. Yeah, well, we will. Now we, we need to order some videos. Well, since you're doing that, you want to say something to them right now <laughs> if they see this? Yeah, I think that we should uh, provide or more people would uh, should buy this video and send it to their relatives. Now, are they from another town? Yeah, they're in California. My oh, see, we have to let the people in California know how I, the... I, wish, I really wish that, that when they were growing up or when they were in high school and college that they have this kind of program. Well, what about in California? Mm. No, I just want to say that I'm very impressed with uh, what we've seen today and yesterday. I mean, take a look around you. The enthusiasm, it's going to continue. This doesn't stop here. Nope. It just keeps on going. And the thing about it is the, these kids that are performing today, they're only like sophomores and juniors and they're going to continue that tradition and that the seniors when they go into their colleges they're going to continue dropping knowledge on these other brothers and sisters out here this bond will never break never once you participate in a program like this it sets a tone for the families for the community well what about other communities maybe the ones that don't have transportation and you know maybe they can start something up there too right see what they've been doing is that they've been trying to re um besides the high schools they're trying to get outreach programs for those high schools that haven't established those clubs yet so what they do is they offer carpools and stuff like that so that they do get the information to them and then they establish the you know the phone trees so that they do get it wow that's a that's really good this 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 hampton roads area is blowing up and uh, it's like it's just starting now all right thanks a lot Stefano. Good. Thank from today's event. I'm Rosemary Wilson. I'm on the Virginia Beach School Board. And I am so impressed. I learned a lot about the history of the Filipinos community. And I saw a lot of very talented young people. I was extremely impressed. So do you think this generation is going to be able to um, build and learn from what we are all um, teaching to them and also learning from them as well so that maybe they could continue this on? What you did today was so important because it's building that pride in who you are. And if you don't do that, you do lose it. And it was portrayed so beautifully in the skits. Well, gosh, thank you so much. I think all of us have learned something in I, your presence I and everyone else. Lot. I learned a lot, and I appreciate being invited. Well, thank you for being here. My name is Stefano Reyes, and I'm currently attending Old Dominion University. And at Old Dominion University, our Filipino American Student Association is here to set up outreach programs for the local high schools. It is our chance to give back. And what better way to give back than to our youth? The reason is to stimulate and provoke thoughts about not only the Filipino and Filipino-American history, but about themselves. We want them to be proud of who they are and where they came from. But when you have programs like this, who do you give thanks to? Is it to the students? Is it to the facilitators? To the program directors? We give thanks to you, our parents, our uncles and our aunties, our lolos and our lolas. We want you to know that we will not forget about your sacrifices and your hardships that you had when you came to this foreign land. We will document these hardships in our skits, in our poetry, in our readings. We, do not, uh, we don't do this out of just respect because it is our duty to document this history because if we don't do it, who will? Yesterday, if you weren't at Tidewater Community College, you missed out on quite a show. We had high schools from Florida, New York, New Jersey, DC, put on the most remarkable skits that I've ever seen. Not only were they, they were heartwarming but they were inspired. I actually forgot that these were high school students performing in front of me. Their strong character and their sharp poise was more than words can describe, but only by emotions being felt. 
So I just want to say thank you. Thank you for coming to our Hampton Roads and sharing your beautiful insight on our people, your people. But today, I'm here to introduce to you another group of young men and women who will perform for you today. I'm sorry, but there will be no singing and there will be no dancing. But one thing that will remain constant is the truth. The harsh truth of the obstacles and hardships that our loved relatives had to face when coming into this foreign land. The harsh truth of growing up Pinoy Pinay, not only back then, but today as well. So please, pay close attention. Get comfy in your seats and relax. Be prepared for today your minds will be stimulated and provoked. So please, like Joni said, mark this day in your calendar. For this day on October 12, 1997, the youth of Hampton Roads will be heard and history again will be made. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. I am not the same. I am not Chinese, Korean, Japanese, or any of the other multitude of people who come from your Far East. I am Filipino. I am proud. There are no others like me or my people. We are in the midst of a death march. We have been walking for years. We have walked and settled in new countries to expand the globe. We are in America, Iceland, England, Germany, everywhere. Through the years we have assimilated. Through the years we have changed. Through the years, we are so changed and transformed, it is impossible to find where we started or where we will finish. Lost is our language, somewhere between here and there. It was decided when we were to speak. Our voice should not sound different, but sound the same, like we belong, like we were American, English, Icelandic, or whatever. Lost is our culture. Somewhere in the millions of miles and steps taken, our stories, our history, our traditions, our respect were put down and left behind. Our traditions should be their traditions. Our holidays should be their holidays. We should be the same. We should be American, Icelandic, English, German, or whatever. Lost was our creativity, our passion, our poetry. In the cadence of hard marching, we chose to become professionals. We became accountants, nurses, lawyers, doctors, successes. Gone was the philosophy, the painting, the dancing, the singing, the beauty. Our art should be their art. Our masters should be their masters. We should love the American, the Icelandic, the English, the whatever. The next generation was the goal. Make things better. Work hard so our children can be successful. My mother, she has a degree in commerce from one of the brightest schools in the Philippines. She works at Target. My auntie is a chemist and she works at Kmart. My cousin was a doctor. She's a nurse now. Work hard and forget our dreams so that our children's dreams can come true in this world of lies. Our time is past. We have made our choice. Our children will fulfill the plan we started, and hopefully, they will finish. Have, have they? Are we the only Asians who brought lumpia punset and adobo to the world? <laughs> are we the people whose culture is defined by a few meals and some dancing sticks? Are, are we? we? There is a well of pure power in the hearts of my people. I have heard the cry from the lips of my parents. I know my history. I know the truth. We are more. We are more than what they think. We are more than what we even think. We are warriors, writers, artists, lovers, healers. We are everything. Most importantly, we are different. 
We are not like anyone else. We think differently, we express differently. We are not American, Icelandic, English, German, or any other nationality. We, we are, are Filipino. Filipino. To a world that tried to break us, we welcome your curiosity and bid you mabuhay. To our parents who worked so hard to make things right and so different that we could be the same, will you teach us again to be different? How to be like you so that we can be ourselves? To, to you, you, our, our elders, elders, we say, say mahalo kita. To anyone who does not know, comprehend, or wish to understand, we are part of the countries in which we come from. We earned our right to be American, Icelandic, English, German, or whatever else we chose to call ourselves. But our, but our souls, souls, our, our spirits, spirits, have been, are, and will always be, of the Vino! Yeah. fortune over this land. They settled and lived uptown where they are seen but yet unknown and hidden. In the fields where they sweat and blood and suffered in agony, yet never praised or raised. But never did you think or dare of telling the world what a life you had. Yes, it's true that some have gone to disclose the truth on what a fate they had when others laugh dubiously. And these others, the so-called people that have either gained their position through a half-forgotten pride or a remorseful self-respect. I speak not of hate or blame, because you're you. It is their fault, we all know. Yes, we're glad to be here and are seeing these things in its ferocity. But happy? Are we really happy? I want to be free from the chains of unjustified reality. I just want to be a person, unchained and free. Segregation, exploitation, and oppression all behind me. In my wishes, I long to find a place like Shangri-La where there's no discrimination of any kind. But in brown reality, I know this will never be. Go away! Your kind not wanted. Words and sounds said harshly and with hate. How come? What did I do? Is this what happens to those who merely seek their fate? No! Not so! My mind, my heart, fighting back my tears. I go! I find! To be safe, protected from my fears. But wait! Is this what I want? To live in an island, to only leave an island. I fight! I stay! And, and make this place my land! land. Sorry, old brown man. 
I'm to blame for your death. I'm the young soul, spirited as a rattlesnake, cocky, bold, and arrogant. I placed myself before you and all that you stood for. I spend my time just hanging out, with no direction, no focus. Now that I finally realize, no real hope in anything. Yeah, I admit, I didn't care very much about you. I had more important things on my mind. I had to have those speakers in my car, man. I had to have those baggy jeans, man. This pager was my lifeline. You see how I've been seduced by material world and its symbols. A swoosh on my shoes, a horseman on my shirt, a pony on my car. And through my quest to attain these things, I have forgotten you. Forgive me. I'm sorry, old man. I am to blame for your death. Yes, I made straight A's, reciting, memorizing, regurgitating facts and figures that I couldn't relate to. I was so willing to participate in discussions about Martin Luther King, the Great Depression. I even thought I knew who killed JFK. But when we had that brief little tidbit about the Philippines' role in World War II, I slumped with my head down, praying that the teacher wouldn't call on me to provide some insight about the Philippines I knew nothing about. For some reason, I was ashamed. I don't know why. I was just ashamed. Maybe it was because I thought that you had no part in this country. All that you had to offer was being a cook on Navy ships. That is certainly nothing to be proud of. So I thought, I was so wrong. At the same time, I didn't do anything. I didn't ask why I felt that way, why I was so ashamed. I learned without questioning, without giving you your respect. I went about my life reciting, memorizing, regurgitating. I did those things, if for no other reason, because I felt I was expected to do so. Where are you? I need you. American history. You're not in here. Maybe that's why I thought you didn't exist. Please forgive me for not looking for you. I'm sorry, old man. I am to blame for your death. But being Filipino in this country is hard, you know. I look around and see no one looks like me. I always saw myself as different from everyone else. I desperately needed, wanted, had to be accepted. So I chose to distance myself from my Filipino-ness. Wished that my skin was any color but brown. Wish that my house didn't smell the way it did with all those damn plastic runners all over the house. Wish that I could walk out of my house without my clothes reeking of fried lumpia or the mist. I even tried to pinch my nose together so it wouldn't be so flat. I hated bringing friends over to the house because they would ask questions of why they had to take off their shoes and why I had a slot machine in my kitchen. So for the hundredth time, I would yell, it's a rice dispenser, damn it! A rice dispenser. A rice dispenser. I didn't want to deal with it. So I chose to get out. To forget about something I couldn't get out of. My past, my heritage, my history, in my quest for acceptance, I have betrayed you. Forgive me. Don't you even lay this guilt trip on me. I never needed you. Never. I was nominated most likely to succeed in my class. I was head of the student council, 
one of the most popular people in school. I went to college, and I graduated with my physical therapy degree. And now look at me. I am 24 years old, and I make $45,000 a year. I am living the American dream. A dream that you foolishly thought you could be a part of. I can do whatever, whenever I want. Don't you wish you were me? Don't you? I wish I could believe everything I just said. That way things would be easier on me. I went to one of those culture nights last year, and you know how those things are. The Tinkling presentation, followed by the martial arts demonstration, and then the inevitable, the singing. The only reason why I went was for the free food and the dance afterwards. But this, this culture night is different. I actually learned of how people who look like me fit in this place we call America. I learned of how you fought gallantly in World War II, and how they were so ungrateful to you, and how you came in the 20s with such high hopes, only to be called a brown monkey. And they wanted to actually hunt you down like some animal for sport in Washington. And still you came to California to pick grapes in the hot sun for a mere 15 cents a day. The only reason why you came was to provide a better life for you and your family. And it was in that I realized that you are exactly like my father. And I'm never going to forget him. So why should I forget you? They say that ignorance is bliss and that knowledge is power. But I learned it all too late. All too late to help you. Forgive me. Consequently, many of us walk around and say we're proud Filipinos. But exactly of what? We're so content with ourselves, our social functions, our queen contests, our picnics. Sally Mayos could give a damn about what you've done and what you've been through. We're still lost in America. We still don't know where we fit in. So we wander. We live and still wander down a path we feel is right. But how can you travel without knowing where you've been? The answer lies with him. It's great. lies there, so quiet, so still, so cold, and in his face and hands, one can read his life now past. You came here because you thought you could partake in the American dream. Foolish old man, what did it get you? 
A job in the field? Yeah. It was something familiar. Instead of eating during your own land, someone paid you to eat theirs. Then the war came. Good little Filipino boy. You fought for the Americans. The same people who called you subhuman, a monkey, a fish head, a flip. The same people that are pressing your mother and father, and their mother and father, and their mother and father. And what it get you? A dancing with some girl, a pat on the back, a job in the fields. Then you try to raise a family. You were proud. But pride, but pride didn't put clothes on their backs, a roof over their heads, or food in their stomachs. You swallowed your pride and fit the stereotype. Quiet, passive, hardworking, subservient, and what it gets you. A change from the fields to a kitchen? Is that what's known as progress? A sitting being burnt by the sun. You were burnt by hot water. Instead of being cut by dirty plants, you were cut by dirty knives. Your face was furrowed by perspiration and tears of anger, frustration, pride and pain. You work hard so we can survive. How ungrateful we have been. You were so proud of me, your son. I saw it in your eyes. Those same eyes, which we'll never see again. I saw them smile on your lips. Those same lips, which will never smile again. I felt it in your handshake. Those same hands, which will never move again. So you lie there. So quiet. So still. So cold. So. What it gets you. Before I came to America, I finished my first year of high school, but I was unable to finish all the way because life in America influenced me very much. I had a cousin in the U.S. He usually writes to my relatives in the Philippines and talk about the good life in America. The pictures he sent, he'd be all dressed up, you know, nice suit, nice Stetson hat, cane, and even sporty black and white shoes. I thought, if I could come to America, I can have clothes like that too. But more than this, I want to come and better my life and get a better education. But my parents couldn't afford it. So what they had to do was sell part of our land, care about, and a cow so I can just come to America. It was sad when I was about to leave everyone and everything behind. I had to rely on my determination to better myself with the better I could accomplish. I recognized that in my village, there was nothing there for me. I remember my mother's words. She said, go, venture. Maybe you can find a better life than that you have here. We had heard stories about how America had better opportunities for people who really wanted to pursue something, get an education, or just better their lives. That's one reason why I came to America. It was cold. I was there on the pier all by myself, hungry and scared. You know, you're all alone in a strange country. You don't know anybody. My cousin didn't even meet me, and I was just 17 years old. I saw a restaurant nearby, and I only had 50 centavos. That's all the money I had. I was hungry, so I decided to go in the restaurant, but hesitated because there were a lot of people there. I saw a man at the counter and said, sir, I'm hungry. I'd like to buy one piece of bread. Huh? What do you want, boy? 
I said, I would like to buy one piece of bread. I'm hungry. Okay. So he took me to the back, to the kitchen, and gave me two slices of bread. I gave him my 50 centavos. What's this? What kind of money is this? Sir, that's Filipino money. You can't use that here. Go on, take the bread. Get out of here, go back to where you came from. Then a police officer saw what was happening. I told him I just arrived from the Philippines. I got no place to go. He asked, what address did your cousin give you? I showed him the address of my cousin. He called the place, it was a Filipino club. He spoke to the president of the Filipino club and said, there's a Filipino boy here. His relative did not come to meet him. He's alone here, freezing. It's cold. So by 11 p.m., a man picked me up, took me to the Filipino club by car. I spent the night there on the wood floor. As I was beginning to fall asleep, I asked myself, is this America? My family and friends are sad because I was leaving. You'll be thousands and thousands of miles away. You'll be all alone there. When you're sick, who will, who will look out for you? Who will watch for you? Who will take care of you? That's what they told me before I left. My ex expectations of America were that everything would be fine and that we would be treated nicely. My American school teacher said that we would be treated nicely because the United States, the United States, because the United States, oh, we belong to the United States and there's no, there's equality, freedom, and there's no race. I expected America to be nice and a place where we could get good jobs. But what happened was, oh. But really, what I expected is that when I came here, I would go to a place that had electricity. But what happened was my brother brought me to a farm camp where there was no electricity. We had to use those kerosene lamps. We didn't have what we call indoor restrooms or toilets. They were outside. That's when one of the workers said to me, welcome to America. When I first arrived here, I was so homesick because I didn't know anybody. There, were no one, there was no one to turn to. There were times when I only had bread and water to eat. There was no money, no job. In 1932 and 1933, I wanted to go back to the Philippines, but then I thought of the reason I left, to come here for an education. If I went back without an education then, well, it didn't happen to go that way. People who knew me, especially those who went to school with me there, might come around and say, so you came back, huh? Without an education? Why did you go then? I thought they might say that to me, and I'd be embarrassed. So I didn't go back. But I wish I never came to America. Little money we had, and 
pulled all our money to pay for rent and something to eat. In 1929, 1930, an old man, Thomas Espinola, had a pool hall in El Dorado. He ran the pool hall and in the basement there was some extra space. So if we had no money to pay for rent, he let us go to the basement and sleep there. When we got a little money, we gave it to him. So if someone was looking for rent to work, we'd go there early in the morning and work for two to three hours. He paid us just 10 cents an hour. There were no jobs open except on the farm in those days. You could not get any schoolboy job, any janitorial job, any post office job. There were none. So where did we go? To a farm. Any farm. Washington, Oregon, California, wherever there was a farm. It was really rough when we stayed in that camp. The walls of our room were so thin you could see daylight through the cracks. In the winter, we had to go to the levee to get wood for an old stove we used as a heater. It kept us warm, but gosh, it was so cold then. Having just arrived from the Philippines, it was hard to get used to the cooler climate. Man, sometimes I had to cover myself with an old mattress just to stay warm through the night. It was cold, awful cold, and you could feel the wind. Sometimes I would ask, is this the better life in America? It was worse than what I had back home. It was cold, and we had to pump our water outside. There was no hot water, so when we wanted to take a bath, we had to use a big steel tub and burn wood underneath to warm it up a bit. In 1932, I worked in Santa Clara in peace for a dollar a day, 10 cents an hour. Then we had to pay 63 cents for our expenses. So how much left? 37. If you are on the farm, the wages are the same wherever you go. The average was then 10 to 15 cents an hour. You work 10 hours and get a dollar and a half minus 75 cents for board. Then maybe you get 200 hours a month. Sometimes you don't have enough to pay for your board. I used to pay during the winter, but from October through February, we had no work. I used to owe the labor contractors sometimes 75 to 80 dollars when June came around. Yes, that was really my life. Well, at least we had three meals a day and of course we had each other. I kept looking for work and found a job as a dishwasher at a restaurant. This was better because I knew how to wash dishes. Working at a restaurant you had stacks and stacks of dishes to wash without machines. The water was hot and full of soap suds Sweat and sweat when you wash those pots. They're great big pots. And before the end of the day, you're really worn out. I did that for one year, receiving $10 a week, and was able to save some money to send back home so I, my parents could buy back the land that they sold for my fair here in America. I went to Los Angeles, hoping to eventually land a schoolboy job. And you know, all my Filipino teachers in the Philippines had studied in the United States. And they told me their stories about earning their education by supporting themselves. In 1935, I enrolled in Santa Monica Junior College, but I had no more money. So the first day, I didn't have anything to eat. Second day, nothing but water. On the third day, there was a call for a schoolboy job for $4 a month with free board and lodging. Of course, I took the job right away but it didn't even pay enough to pay for a bus fare to school. So I walked from my house, 10 blocks, to a cheaper five cent bus. I was able to do that for two months, but I didn't know how to cook or clean the house. Yet the lady was good enough to show me everything she did. So I learned to clean, prepare dinner. I even washed the dishes when they were through eating. She was very nice. I later got a job for $15 a month. Still cooking and cleaning, that was quite a jump from $4. Besides, they let me use the car to take their boys to school and pick them up. This job lasted until I graduated college. Now, with a college degree, I went to find a job as a teacher. But the school principal said, you have very good recommendations, but you're not a citizen. The school, the school policy does not employ any aliens. After all that, I easily became heartbroken. But I got over it. I survived. 
still in Los Angeles, I went to work for a doctor on Westlake Avenue. My job was from 5.30 in the morning until 9.30 at night, this time for $15 a month. I had to clean the rooms, polish the furniture, and help the lady prepare the doctor's food. One day when I finished waxing the floor, the lady wet her pink finger and, and put it on the floor. If she noticed a little dirt, she'd look at me and say, you didn't do your job right. I didn't mind. I was so patient. I had to work every day except for a half day on Sunday. One day I had my worst experience. I was getting ready to leave the house when the lady stopped me. Boy, you come here. Yes, ma'am? You clean the mess. What mess? The dog mess. Mrs. Miller, I can't do that right now. This is my only day off and I'm about to meet my friends in town. Oh, other brown monkeys. Are there really more brown monkeys like you in the Philippines? Boy, I got so mad. This lady must be prejudiced, I thought. So I said to her, Yes, Mrs. Miller, there are other brown monkeys in the Philippines. There are white monkeys, too. You better fix my time. I quit. I went to the basement to get my things and left. I never came back. My early days of growing up were in the Depression years. I was born in 1924 and the financial crash was in 1929. Actually, I didn't realize how tough life was because when you're little, you don't know of all the sad realities that are affecting your life. But my mother was a very jolly person who made the best of everything. When everybody was really in the midst of the Depression, my father's job in the tailor shop ended, and he had to pick peaches for 15 cents an hour. That was really bad. You can't imagine what it was like then with the family of several small children. At times, we didn't have much food, but we never missed a meal. I knew our financial situation was not good when our supper consisted only of rice, cream, and sugar. My brothers and sisters liked it, but I could hardly swallow my food. My mother would always say, be thankful, at least you have something to eat. To this day, I don't like rice pudding. It gives me sad memories. Yet although we didn't have much food at times, my father would still often bring one or two Filipino single men home from town so we could share our dinner with them. I remember my mother and my father whispering in the kitchen, you don't realize that our meal is so limited tonight. Lucky if we have enough for our children, my mother would say. Do you know that these men had not eaten for several days? I'm sure our food could stretch, my father would answer. Somehow it did. Several years later, at an out-of-town social event, a stranger came up to my father saying, Are you Mr. Bantilio? Yes, my father answered. I guess you don't remember me. I'm one of the men that you brought home to your house several times. You kept me from starving, and I will never forget that. The man took our address. Later, he gave my father something because he was so grateful. It was a planless life, hopeless and without direction. I was merely living from day to day, place to place, and job to job. There seemed to be no place to go in this wide land. There seemed to be horror and tragedy everywhere I went. The lives of Filipinos were cheaper than those of dogs. You don't belong here. 
but I have no idea what country they were talking about because I was born in Stockton. And then I remember my father would tell us stories of Filipinos defending themselves against police who would ride down El Dorado Street and haul a paddy wagon to haul away Filipinos who were just standing there. It shocked me for a while because Americans didn't seem to respect us. So I knew right away what I learned in school, back home, wasn't really true. The Americans, they disregarded, disregarded us, put us down. I didn't really know why. Americans seemed prejudiced. Some of them treated us like we were just animals. When we went to church, when we were sitting in the pew, no one would sit with us. When we went to the theater, we were always ushered to the sides and to the back. We weren't even allowed to sit in the middle of the theater. Since the 1920s, I never thought that I would be what I am now. But I've worked hard to make it this kind of life. When we first came here, we never thought life would happen this way. We thought we couldn't survive sometimes. But we survived. I survived, in spite of all the hardships that I had. I would not say that I'm a failure, but I did not realize my dream of continuing my education because my dream was to finish my education here and then go back. The obstacles placed in earning a living prevented me from doing this. It was not easy. I have no regrets. As I look back, I think of the hardships. And like everything else, it's time and place we learn to accept. Sure, we can do things in a hurry. But I think those people that have the good intention to help others will get there. Some things may be painful. Some people take for granted that change came easily. It's never easy. But change must come. I believe change must come. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the youth of Hampton Roads. Smile. Okay. Go ahead. I'm Jeremy Balon. I'm a senior at Lake Terrell High School, representing Norfolk and House and all of the community, including Virginia Beach and on, including the state of Virginia now. So, I think you guys did a great job today. Thank you. I pre appreciate it. And you know, show our everybody's talents and what we can do to respect the elderly. Show what we have for our parents, our society, our community. You know, our service to everyone. You guys put in a lot of hard work. I saw less paper up there on stage. <laughs> yes, we did. We try, we try to memorize everything, so that, that was pretty good, you know. So you guys are going to wake up in the middle of the night like, <gasps> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we were surprised ourselves, you know, because, I mean, really didn't think that, you know, it would happen this way. It, it came out to a great outcome, you know. Have you, thought of that, have you thought of that there's possibility maybe some um, of these Filipino associations might even invite you guys to, to you know, to perform in some other uh, functions? Some other states and functions. Yes, mm -hmm. I do. I believe that. And hopefully in the future, everybody will come to Unite, to come together just, you know, as a group, you know, to be as one. Just Well, give us some information of it. It's just the fact that, you know, we're still working on it. We're still getting our, you know, acts and responsibilities together. So, I mean, I believe this can happen for the future. And for our, you know, ourselves and all. So I mean, that's it's pretty good. So well, thanks a lot. Hey, is there any last words you want to say to maybe all your friends out here that uh, helped you out? Ah, uh, respect to everybody. Thanks for uh, coming out. You know, enjoy the show and and uh, hope you all enjoyed it. And just 
you know, relax, you know, stay focused on, you know, the future because, you know, what we have in sight is for, the, for us, for the future, for our, you know, generation to come up and see what happens in the future for all of us. So. Well, thank you very much. You're right, a good thank man. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right, so you have to love it. Okay, well. Especially the, you know, the drama. And so it makes me cry. Oh, the drama. <laughs> yeah. That's really hitting close to home, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I love it. Well, tell us something. What about the other parents that didn't get a chance to come here? I know. Do you I have maybe, so yeah, maybe yeah. There'll, there'll be another opportunity l maybe next time? Maybe next year. Yeah, I'm okay. going to tell them how good it is, you know. Good, because this is a learning experience. That's why I told my friends that, that you know, my two kids that's mm -hmm. kind of stubborn they should be here <laughs> oh listen well you know? let's hope they watch this video and they'll listen they'll see what happened <laughs> that's right <laughs> well thank you so much oh, for being thank here you. thank you they're great yeah, yeah they are yeah. we hope to see you that's, that's okay one of, one of many right well um tell us uh, what you uh, think you we've all gotten uh, learned i mean from what you've heard and what you've seen i mean from today's event i mean as, as this sunday winds down i think uh, everybody had the opportunity to really see uh who they were um Simply because no one probably ever knew about the history, or, or if any of that, you know, back in 1587 or even that of 1763, uh, where uh, the Manila men settled in the bayous of Louisiana. Not everybody knows that, and everyone's kind of lost, you know, being Filipino-American growing up. You kind of don't know who you are, and simply because your, your history is not told. But hopefully everybody has a grasp and understanding that, hey, we're not alone and that there's many others, and there's still many other things to learn and maybe even say about our own history, even the current history that we're making now. You know, I admire that you really remember a lot, and you can be able to tell this to other people, but some of us, you know, like me, uh, it's going to be hard for me to tell everyone that didn't come here the same thing that I learned here. So um, if this thing goes on again, do you think it'll be uh, just the same impact for people that didn't get a chance to come here this time? Because this is not going to stop with here, right? No, if anything, it's probably going to get better, simply because the individuals involved in this one will want it to be better. You know what I mean? Now with the group that you're as far as that, but if you want to learn about history, hey, there's only there's only two requirements that I say about Fonz. There's two requirements. One, that you want to learn about Filipino American history, and two, that you like to share Filipino American history with others. Hey, that's good enough. <laughs> Ed, thank you so much. JR, I witnessed like a, a lot of unity, because out on the streets, a lot of people are divided by certain cliques and gangs and stuff like that. But when we just packed them all together and just experienced the history of our culture. It's very moving. Well, speaking of out in the streets and the gangs, how did you yourself get involved in this? Uh, I got involved by just like a group of my friends saying that I should come out, that it's very like open and everyone can share what they want to say about the culture. And I just said, you know, okay, I'll give it a try. Was that already positive for you? Did, were you forced into this? I mean, was, is this something that you thought, you know, something bad had happened maybe with your experience? I mean, I'm just trying to relate to how maybe kids that have that type of, um, you know, experience, how we can bring them in, into this. Yeah, well, I used to be involved in a gang also myself, and I just wanted to change. So I guess this was a change that I was looking for. And about bringing the kids into here, they think this stuff is like gay and stuff like that. Well, we got to educate them, you know. Right. So what's 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 uh, wrong with what they're doing and what do you think we should do to get them in here? I mean, what's positive about this, what do you think? I mean, from your perspective. I think we should, like, be diverse in our knowledge and our beliefs, but not let us not unify just because of, you know, our ignorance. Well, gosh, thank you so much. I mean, just you being here helping us out, I mean... Yes, I'm Dr. Ann Johnson from Tidewater Community College, and I'm chair of the Humanities Division there. And would you like to give us a little um, input of what you've... Um, witness today's event here inside the auditorium? Well, I think what was most impressive was the enthusiasm and motivation of the young people here in presenting skits that were based on their own experiences in uh, trying to find out who they were as Filipinos and what they have learned from Filipino history as well as their need to learn much more. Well, we appreciate you being here. Thank, Thank you, you for... Much. You can't understand me. I'm the toughest thing to walk the earth. Yeah, I walk the way I walk, and I talk the way I talk, because I can. Man, when I'm with my crew, there's no telling what we could do. Whenever any of us is in trouble, man, I got his back. I got his back, and I got his back. And I know someone's got mine. In my world, I have to be tough. Man, I gotta worry about the next crew that steps up to me. Man, I gotta worry about the 10 dealers that are away from my business. I gotta worry about those 10 thugs trying to give me the business. For all I know, I'm invincible. Yeah, I'm the Incredible Hulk. Don't get me angry. You wouldn't like it if I'm angry. Can you understand me? I came to a country I didn't know too much about. To join the Navy and sail under stars and stripes. Yeah, I learned English. It's just enough to get me out. But some of us have the degrees from the land of the yellow sun. But you know it's yellow stars. But you know it's tough. 
to live in a whole new world by yourself. Stop being in the 50s. Stop being in the 60s. Stop being in the 70s as a new recruit in the Navy. The only family that I got is a two inch wrinkled picture in my wallet. The only time I see my family is when I close my eyes and I see a blurred vision of my loved ones. I wish I could touch your cheek. I wish I could wipe the tear off your eye. And simply say, I'll be home soon. I love you. Can you understand me? It's tough in my world. Can you understand me? You know, it's tough without you here. Sometimes when you're gone, I close my eyes. I imagine you caress my face and wipe my tears. And then say I love you. I'll be home soon. But for now, I go alone. I raise your kids that you haven't seen in a while. You know Junior, he's growing up. But still, it's tough. Sometimes I live the life of a very single parent, but it's not by choice. I have become a stronger person now. I learned to do more things because I had to. I've learned to rely on my friends. Like me. Like me. Like me for many things. We have our shopping days, our commissary days. Our days when we speak of the whole world. Our days when we merely stay in our world. Alone, waiting for you to come home. But it's our friendship that makes us strong. Yet it is still tough. You know Junior is growing up. It's tough to understand why he's hanging around a bad crowd. You no, know he needs his father. But you're not here. I need you. We need you. Can you understand me? It's tough in our world. Can you understand me? Um, excuse me, you girls are late again. The next one will result in detention. Where is everybody? Where is everybody? <laughs> um, excuse me, you need to turn off that music right now and sit down, please. Um, let's see. You guys all know about that project we had? And let's see, why don't we have Joy and Brandy go up first? Excuse me, ladies. We did our report on our culture of the Philippines, right here. Um, we migrated in the Great Migration, and we made it over here um, on our, you know, carnival, our, our cruise line ships in 1976. Um, we uh, like to dance the stick. Was it sticks? Yeah, stick dance, which was inspired my mom. Oh, tiny clean, inspired by the goat. <laughs> and um, they like to eat rice a lot. Um, they wear slippers around. I don't think they got sh shoes. shoes. Anyway, <laughs> um, they um, they have, they like to um, dance disco dancing and line dancing. And, um, <laughs> there's 7.2 million islands. And do you have anything to add? Um, this is our map. And this is a picture of the flag, you know, with the red and on the top and the blue on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> and the seven Trojan Islands. That's how we put on the Philippines all wrapped up in one. <laughs> <laughs> Some would be books spinning. Right, right, right. Oh. right. <laughs> and we got pencil twirling. Oh. 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 All right. Yeah, okay, well what they did, they found their activities and stuff, right? So what I had to do was, I, I thought it was, uh, it'd be my job to find out folk music in, from the Philippines. So what I did was, I went to the local record store, and what I did was, I picked up some music because it's from the Philippines, so it's gotta be folk music, right? Right, y'all agree? Yeah, right. All right, yeah, all right. So, um, I'm gonna let y'all peep it. All right, well, 
um, you know, also, it's also my duty to find out some of the, uh, folk dancing. Folk dancing, that's right. So, uh, what we did, we went to the latest club scenes, checked out what was going on. So, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna demonstrate, alright? Alright, ready? Sure. Not the bomb. <laughs> I cannot be a bomb because I do not explode. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is not disco dancing. That is not folk dancing. That is disco dancing. <laughs> what is this? Book twirling. <laughs> Tinickling, tinickling. <laughs> tinickling was not inspired by the god, inspired by the ant. Bird. Wait, silly. And I don't know how this all get messed up. And what is this? Seven billion trillion <laughs> islands in the Philippines? There are 7,102. I, I just don't understand. Excuse me, did you, did you know that right now we are celebrating 100 years anniversary? Yeah, Ever since... Excuse me? <laughs> Please pay attention because this is information. <laughs> did you know that we're celebrating 100 years of anniversary? Ever since the Philippines was colonized by America. Did you know that? Yeah, yeah, whatever. Did you know that the first Filipino to ever walk in North America to set foot was in Morro Bay, California on October 18, 1587 on the Nuestra de Señora Esperanza? Yeah, really, did, whatever. Did you know that? Whatever. Uh, did you know that sexy, sexy actress Tia Carrera could speak Elocano fluently? <laughs> Did you know that? And did you know that in 1763, the first ever Filipino settlement was in New Orleans, Louisiana. They were called Manila men that jumped off Spanish galleon trade ships. Did you know that? That's pretty cool, man. Well, if I didn't know my history, my culture, my facts, I'd be a lost person wondering my identity and who I am. But I know my history, my culture, and my facts because I know my identity. But do you? Oh, 
Um, there's a lot of aspects we can talk about right now. You don't grasp the concept, do you? How about I, I talk, and you, you can, you can write down what, what I say. <laughs> 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 what what were you speaking? I mean the expert you should know. Spanish? Icelandic? Guatemalan? Tagalog brainiac? You do know Tagalog, right? No. <laughs> okay, let's just do English as well. How do you know how to speak Tagalog? You're just a tad bit white. <laughs> I'm part white, yeah. Part what else? Filipino-American. You can't be Phil. You're white. <laughs> even though you're ten, even though you're ten, you'd, you'd still be white. I, I hate to break this to you now. <laughs> well, let's, just, let's just keep going with English. Do it again. What? Speak Tagalog. Okay. Uh, amoy patay na kabayo ka. You must have taken a class or something. No, I'm in class. And you want to know why? Uh, I'm descendant of the Millman. Do you know the Filipinos who jumped ship to Louisiana? Remember? Don't you know your history? Yeah, yeah, sh sure I do, but no way. What are you doing? I I'm, I'm looking for something. What? Color? <laughs> what are you doing? I'm, I'm looking for something else. What? I don't know, drugs? <laughs> I really am Filipino, okay? Let's. Uh. No, see, I, I have a CISO friend, right? But you look nothing like him. You, you have no flavor or cinnamon in you whatsoever. <laughs> look, my ancestors kind of made it with the white folks, and now we're just a bit watered down like Kool Aid, okay? <laughs> Then, like, name some necessities in your house. What? Like, I'm Filipino, so I should have plastic runners. <laughs> you have plastic runners? <laughs> Everywhere, and they're oh so attractive. <laughs> <laughs> name some more. Name some more. Okay. <laughs> like, the giant picture of the Last Supper in the dining room? <laughs> <laughs> or, or how about the huge wooden fork and spoon that's hanging out the <laughs> quit when we were little. <laughs> Hey, look, more Filipinos you can bother. Go 
run, be one with... Never mind. <laughs> but see, what I don't get is, like, here, y'all seem, y'all seem blocks. Where I come from, we knew about our culture. Oh, no, you're not insulting me or No, 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 I don't mean to insult you, I'm sorry. It's just like, did you know that this year is the centennial of our freedom? Hey, look, half past the hair, I gotta go somewhere else. Look, I don't mean to put you on the spot. It's just, I don't know, it's just, I want people to unify. I want us to know about each other, and we don't. We do. Shh, what do we know? What do you know? We like spam. Oh. <laughs> Runners. Not all Fil Filipino dads are in the Navy. You know, uh, some were railroad workers, dishwashers, bellboys. Some even started cooks and chefs. And all moms aren't in the Navy, okay? My auntie's not. <laughs> yeah, well. Um, and you know, here's a little factoid for you. My, I think it was my great grandfather's good friend, Dr. Sadapi Amadezmo, was the very first Filipino ever to practice medicine and surgery. And here, here, I got some. Hey, 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 that's, that's enough. You made your point. You know, any more information? You can read that, you know, possibly. <laughs> okay, well, then I'm just gonna get my stuff and kind of go to lunch. Hey, lunch hey, I, I have lunch next belt, too. Hey, you, you can sit with me if you want. Yeah. Come on, today's lunch special is corned beef and rice. Oh. <laughs> Joke. You do have jokes where you come from, right? <laughs> yeah, I have jokes. And like, when you deal with the gangs, it's like if you got friends in a certain gang, it seems like they get mad at you, or sometimes they don't like it if you hang around with your friends that are in another gang. So like, if you go to if you go somewhere and you're hanging with one group, it's really bad. I mean, it's hard on a certain. It's like it's hard on myself for me to hang with anybody because it's like if everyone is in a different gang, you know, you can't you can't like hang with one person because. They're all, they're all against each other no matter what. I think an issue in our community, specifically in Jersey, is, and you guys should really recognize how valuable this time form is, because our youth really has nothing positive so far. So when we talk about associating with people of our own kind or doing Filipino things, because there's no positive outlet, it tends to become negative. We just hang out with kind of recreational violence kind of things. So forums like this are important because we have positive ways to exp you know, express and explore our Filipino. Um, talking through like, I mean, I'm sorry, talking um, about gangs and stuff, like, because I'm originally from San Diego, and my brothers were really involved with that stuff, so my dad got stationed to Virginia, and he took the first chance, and then they got involved again, and talking through experiences, like, with my family, it really hurt my family, like, really bad, just the gang stuff, all the cheese meats that all the aunties would talk about, you know, my parents, like, they don't know how to raise their sons and whatever, and, like, just, it... It killed my parents it, financially, whatever, mentally. And then my parents started thinking, you know, where do we go wrong or whatever. That's why me, like for myself and the others, that's why I bust butt in school. Just because I don't want, ever want my parents thinking, you know, that they went wrong somewhere. Because they didn't. And my brothers are so straight now. They're, they can't even believe. They just look back and they can't believe how stupid they were. And you people think it's so cool and whatever. A lot of kids do, but it's really not because it really hurts the family that Precision in time, lost in a world of paradigm, young soldiers are sent to battle, a battle that is impossible to win. Yet a courage of steel drove them to this limbo, armed with only a philosophical blade, an armor of heart, and helmet of knowledge. Off they march with pride and disappear to the sunset of society. And, and angelic voices carried by the wind, stopping time momentarily while feeling the cold razor upon the enemy's shoulders. Dulling the pain, a fiery passion ignite within the soul of each kamikaze with the victory in their eyes and confidence to win. They represent it with a smile and a venomous rage. They all carry the heritage of our ancestors, a heritage represented by gold medals in the Olympics, gallant soldiers in World War II, scientists, professors, political leaders, and even the NFL Rookie of the Year, but yet, the struggle continues. Randy, what happened to you? Man, what is
does it look like? I got jumped by the Asian assassins. Sorry, are you okay? No, look, look at me. Who did this? When did this happen? Man, when I was walking home. See, that's why we don't want you walking home alone, Randy. We worry about your safety. We want to know where you are. What? All this, remember the stories I told you. All these stories about people walking home alone. Uh, the guy is in the hospital. Can, can you just stop that? I've heard the story a million times, man. Sorry, don't disrespect your mom that way. Sit down, control your temper. Come on, honey, let me talk to you. Is there anything you want to tell me? Well, what do you want to know? Stop the beginning if you can. Ma'am, I was with my girl, right? And I told her goodnight. And while I was walking, I don't know, some group of Filipino gang or whatever, I don't know. They like jumped me from behind. I don't know, man. You know what? Can, can y'all just, just leave me alone? Right now. Okay, son, we'll be downstairs, me and your mom. The only one to to us. Just let us know. Alright. You know what? I can't have to let his sister talk to him. Yeah, we should have talked. Alright. Where's that gun? Yeah, now the A's gonna wish his neck mess with me. I'm a chicken. Randy, doing what's popular is not always right. But doing what's right is not always popular. It's your choice. Just make sure you can live with it for the rest of your life. So are you saying that if I move on, I play it smart, right? No, you just pass the test. Test? Man, I don't need this. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, can I talk to Officer David, please? Staring upon the setting sun, the immortal warriors stood their ground. With self-fulfillment in their hearts, but confusion in their soul. As they gaze at the crimson night, they do not notice that the roots have sprouted from the tree of our Filipino ancestors. Ancestors we were never told of, but we really need to be told desperately. Yeah. Yeah. College in Boston, and I'm very, very impressed with this whole event. I think I said that in the speech. Well, yeah. you were great. And I think, I think those that weren't able to make it, I mean, they should benefit from watching this as well. Right. So is there anything you want to say to those that missed out? Those that missed out, I hope they buy the video. <laughs> and right, I hope the that video. there are more programs like this. And it won't stop with this. It'll continue on. One of the things I did want to say is having worked with that Oral History Voices, mm -hmm. I was the really voices. moved by seeing the students perform the words 
of the old timers in Stockton who I know oh. intimately. Oh wow! And um, the students wanted to know what my reaction was, mm -hmm. and I told them I was just really oh, excited, wow. and I kept thinking I wish the old timers were here to see themselves oh, being gosh. portrayed by a whole new generation. Oh, so man. that was really moving. <laughs> Well, pretty much, you know, emotionally and physically, um, I'm drained. And I think it was all for a good cause, though, to see all these kids just get together in the summit. And hopefully it doesn't stop here. Hopefully through this program and as far as more club and more people and more people my age and even older who have sort of um, was never exposed to this when they were in high school, you know, to sort of uh, step up themselves. Well, you may not want to hear this now, but uh, what is the next step? <laughs> The next step for me, and that's not even a hard question, is definitely more educational programs. Not, you know, if we can't get it in the curriculum in, you know, mainstream schools, but definitely among the all the culture clubs that we have, um, all the college groups that we have, stress education, because without the knowledge of the past, this whole presentation would never have happened. Well, <laughs> thank you, Mayor, for those kind words. Uh, I'm just a spoke in the wheel, if anything. Um, please. Uh, I don't consider myself any special, any more special than anyone else. Um, I'm just totally pleased with everything that 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 has happened. The su the success that we've had um, exceeds anything that I I've, I could ever imagine. Um, actually, it'll probably hit me later as to what <laughs> everything that has tr transpired over the past two days. Um, I'd like to thank everyone that was involved. Uh, especially uh, the security from Tallwood and Salem. Um, these guys came through when, when I needed them the most and, and I had no more res resources and they were the very last that, that um, I had and props go to them. My oh, uh, this has been a wonderful program and I'm glad it's over with. We're finally cleaning up and I hope that everybody enjoyed the show. Well, you know, it's not going to end here. Um, I guess uh, a lot of the parents were asking me what's going to happen next. Well, what's going to happen next is we probably want the students to write their own histories of their parents and also uh, come up with a book in the year 1999. And that's going to be the ultimate goal to prepare for the year 2000 where the Fonz National Conference will be in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Can you give some information? single parent 
keeping bills paid, maintaining a structured, organized routine for my sister and me, chauffeuring us wherever we need to go, though she's scared to death about driving, making repairs on the house and cars, and raising my sister and me to be motivated, independent people. She does all of this on a single income budget single-handedly. She makes our home a haven, a safety zone from the world. But she also challenges Ashley, my sister, and me to make the most of the opportunities we have now so that we can make the choices as to the avenues we'll take in the future. And personally, she fills me with the security that she will always be there when I need her. She is my emotional anchor. I sometimes look back at the 20 years my parents have been together and wonder who was there for her when she was alone and the burden of the entire household was her only responsibility. Who calms her fears and doubts those times my father was away and she had no one to turn to but two small children that demanded me, 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 all the time and didn't even know how to ask her how she was feeling. My mother, a loser? My mother weak? No way. There are few women who can handle what my mother has been handling for over 20 years and yet keep smiling the way she does. I once asked her why she didn't work or volunteer somewhere or take up a hobby or something. Then she asked me how I felt those times she was away. I remember those feelings of loss and insecurity and the expression showed on my face. She took one look at that expression and said, that's why my family is the most important thing to me. My mother is a homemaker. And in 1977, she married my father and chose that career. And she is damn good at it.
people my age and even older who have sort of um, was never exposed to this when they were in high school, you know, to sort of uh, step up themselves. Well, you may not want to hear this now, but uh, what is the next step? <laughs> <laughs> the next step for me, and that's not even a hard question, is definitely more educational programs. Not you know, if we can't get it in the curriculum in, you know, mainstream schools, but definitely among the all the culture clubs that we have, um, all the college groups that we have, stress education, because without the knowledge of the past, this whole presentation would never have happened. Well, one question that I've sort of accumulated from a lot of the interviews with the uh, parents that came here is that they're really amazed because a lot of the kids nowadays with the fast-paced media and their short attention span, somehow you were able to reach out to them. Is there something that you know that we don't know about this? <laughs> it's easy. I think, and it's easy because, you know, we're finally talking about Filipino-Americans. You know, like I said earlier, um, if you find something pertinent to you that's relative to you, then it's going to be easy. And uh, talking about the past and people, their ancestors, and it's easy for them. Well, I think it was great how you were able to um, get that across to them. Thank you, Ray. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Put together. Joe's the man. Oh, stop, 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 guys. Um, <laughs> no, um, thank you, Mayor, for those kind words. Uh, I'm just a spoke in the wheel, if anything. Um, please, uh, I don't consider myself any special, any more special than anyone else. Um, I'm just totally pleased with everything that 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 has happened. The su the success that we've had um, exceeds anything that I I've, I could ever imagine. Um, actually, it'll probably hit me later as to what. <laughs> everything that has tr transpired over the past two days. Um, I'd like to thank everyone that was involved, uh, especially uh, the security from Tallwood and Salem. Um, these guys came through when, when I needed them the most and, and I had no more res resources and they were the very last that, that um, I had. And props go to them, my, my total respect. Um, to the security crew, um, as well as everyone. Uh, this has been a wonderful program, and I'm glad it's over with. We're finally cleaning up, and I hope that everybody enjoyed the show. Well, you know, it's not going to end here. Um, I guess uh, a lot of the parents were asking me what's going to happen next. Well, what's going to happen next is we probably want the students to write their own histories of their parents and also uh, come up with a book in the year 1999. And that's going to be the ultimate goal to prepare for the year 2000, where the Fonz National Conference will be in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Can you give some information? Yeah, what's going what's gonna to happen next is we're going to come up with a video and a book, and we're going to have the students uh, write about their history and experiences of their parents where they can get credit in um, high school and college and um, that's about it. Well, I do have a question though with, with the habits that sometimes a lot of people form when they start seeing the same place, the same people and I know it's hard to delegate um, people doing different things and having mm -hmm. different places. Um, mm -hmm. Is there something that you're starting to put together as far as how we can see new things and still relate to what we're experiencing? Um, you mean ch the program content? The program content, um, yes. The way, the way it's going to change is that we have to have uh, coaches and we have to have um, uh, people who's...